Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio, where this week I'm doing some more work on the ON30 Goldfield and Calico layout. I actually have an open studio coming up in just a couple of days, and I've decided I'd like to have some more trains running besides the Gruesome Gulch layout and the ON18 Bandy Canyon Railway. And the only other layout that is even close to being ready would be the Goldfield and Calico. The Thunder Mesa layout is going to be a couple more months before I'll be able to get any uh, any new track laid and, and, and get trains running on that. So I've decided to go ahead and uh, in the next couple of days we'll be laying some cork roadbed, some new track, actually recycling some old track, and doing some wiring to get the main loop operational here on the Goldfield and Calico. Some of the other track uh, might not be done, some of the other wiring might not be done yet, but I will at least get the main loop up and operational by Friday. This is a three foot section of Midwest cork roadbed, which unfortunately has become rather difficult to find recently. Hopefully it will become available again soon, but for now I have enough to finish this job. I like to start with a bead of yellow glue just on the uh, right now on the right hand side the nearer side of that track center line and I like to use push pins right down into the plywood to hold this in place until that glue dries. Now on this side it takes the uh, left hand leg of the Y and heads off towards the turntable. Bring that right up and line it up. Now I need to cut a custom piece to fit right here where the two legs of the Y diverge. Mark that there and right there with a sharpie and line my straight edge up on those marks and trim that piece off. And some more yellow glue. I should be able to slide this right back in there. Just like that. And I think I'll go ahead and come the rest of the way around this corner. Back over at this Y switch, I need to trim another piece to finish that off. I've got another switch here, so once again, I want to follow the diverging route to the right. Now, where I am now, this is back, this will be back behind the backdrop. And these, these will be a pair of staging tracks back here. So instead of that valuable cork roadbed, I'm using some uh, corkboard sheets that I've cut down to five inch width so I can put two parallel tracks on there. This stuff is exactly the same height as the cork roadbed at uh, one eighth of an inch, so it'll mate up perfectly. Out at the end of a spur track like this, I actually like to bevel this end of the track. And that is the last piece of roadbed. This other approach track to the turntable, I'm going to leave that uh, for now, just like that, because I want to build the turntable first so I'll know exactly the proper angle to have this approach from. So I'm just going to leave it like that. One thing I almost forgot is um, some pads for the ground throws or switch stands that are going to go over here for the switches to bring them up to the same level as the track and to bake these I just use a couple of scraps of uh, leftover road bed. Each of these pads needs to be about an inch and a half long and that's so I can have the proper clearance for ON30 equipment uh, to clear the ground throw, which will be out here. If this were HO scale, I could, you know, I could put it closer. But this is just another example of how even though HO scale and ON30 are the same track gauge, you do have to make adjustments for the size of the equipment and structures and things like that, which are 
148 scale. I think this glue is dry enough that I can remove all of these push pins now. Now I'll use my sanding block to smooth out any rough spots or dry glue blobs or anything like that. Now I just need to clean all this up and then I can start laying some track. Now each of the turnouts on the Goldfield and Calico is going to be connected to a frog juicer. If you're not familiar with a frog juicer, you can get them from uh, Tam Valley Depot. That's where I like to get mine from. But on these Pico Owen 30 turnouts, there's no wire connected to the frog. So the first thing we have to do is solder a wire to the frog. And the best place to do that, in my opinion, is this little piece of wire right here, which uh, connects this part of the frog to this part down here which connects to the the uh, the point rails that go back and forth and I like to use a green wire to differentiate it from the uh, red and black that I use to power the rest of the track or all the other track feeders I'm gonna strip off a little piece right there and I'm gonna solder this on there's a lot of plastic around this and I don't want to melt it I'm going to try to lift this wire up out of this groove. And then if I can slide this wire underneath, it makes this job a lot easier. And then I'm just going to fold that wire back around like that. And use a little bit of no clean flux on here just to hedge my bets, even though I'm using some 60-40 rosin core solder. Nice hot soldering iron. Say a little prayer, and we're off to the races. Just need to give myself enough slack. There's probably plenty. I'll cut this off. And I just need to mark and drill a hole for this. Thread the wire down through the hole. Connect these rail joiners. I'm not going to solder this joint because it's a turnout and I, I don't like to solder those. I like to leave them free. This is how I like to lay uh, Pico turnouts and flex track. These are some micro engineering small rail spikes. And then put that right there so it sits right on top of that cast in uh, spike detail. That way, when everything's painted and ballasted, the spikes just disappear. I almost forgot that I need to cut through this section of roadbed right here. So these two sections can separate. Now, coming out of the turnout on this side of the frog, uh, I want to put some insulated rail joiners. And these are plastic rail joiners. And that will allow the frog juicer to do its job and prevent a short circuit. You don't want to have power being fed from this side, from the frog into the turnout. These are some Zuron flush cutting rail nippers. Incredibly handy tool to have if you're laying track. Now I'll add a couple of insulated rail joiners here. Then on these connections, I can use good old Atlas Code 100 nickel silver rail joiners. Once again, insulated joiners up at the frog end of the turnout. It's a good idea to sight down the rails on a regular basis to make sure you're getting everything as straight as you can. And by the way, in case I didn't mention, I'm using Pico ON30 track. This is a Code 100 sized rail. And these are some Zuron sp spiking pliers. These are for hand laying track. 
They also work really well for this. There's a little T-shaped cutout in the jaw that holds on to the head of the spike. Makes it easier to push down in there. Now things get a little interesting because we're coming to the first rail joint on a curve. And I'm going to want to solder this connection. You want to solder it before you bend it, right? Because uh, after, if you try to, you know, bend this little stub of track and then join this up, it's, it's just not going to work. So you have to solder these joints before you bend it to the shape of the curve. A little flux on there. And once again, I've got some 60-40 um, rosin core lead solder. Heat up the rails and the rail joiner. Looks like a pretty good joint. Let's try this side. I know you can't see what I'm doing here. I apologize for the camera angle. Can't always be in the right place at the right time. Now when I bend this around, it should all bend like one piece of track. Now on the curve here, I'm putting these spikes closer together about every uh, fifth tie or so, maybe closer if it's a sharper curve. These spikes are just long enough so that when I push them in, the very tip actually goes into the plywood. And that gives you a nice, good, firm grip. And I think one more solder joint over on this side ought to do it. I usually only solder on the curves and uh, leave the joints unsoldered on the straight sections and that is to allow for the seasonal expansion and contraction of this nickel silver rail. Now even though this is a 15 inch radius curve at its sharpest point uh, it does have a spiral easement on either side coming in and out of the curve, which uh, is actually probably closer to about 22 inch radius. And that uh, is going to make things operate much more smoothly. And that brings us around to the back side of the layout, where the track is actually going to transition from ON30 to HO scale. I'm using HO track back here because it's, you know, a little bit cheaper and widely available. It's the same size rail, code 100, and this is a Pico uh, number five turnout, left-hand turnout. This is for the beginning of the, uh, the staging yard back here. But I do need to account for the fact that the ties are not as thick, so the track doesn't sit as high as the ON30 track. So I've got a little shim of thin cardboard. Just put that right under there to ease that transition. Make that nice and smooth. And again, use some insulated rail joiners coming out of the frog end of the turnout. I'm not going to be finishing the track for the staging yard today. I'm going to save that for a later date. I just want to get enough track laid right now so I can complete the loop and get some trains running. That's the goal. And this is going to be the last piece of track I add today. There's more to do, obviously, around the turntable and the staging yard, as I mentioned, but I'm going to get this done by the weekend. It's time to move on to wiring. And the first thing I need to do is run a pair of bus wires to continue the DCC wiring bus from the Calico Mountain section of the land all around this, this new section. And a DCC wiring bus is just a pair of wires that runs underneath the layout, uh, underneath where the main line is usually, and just follows, you know, the course, the loop of the track all the way around from the DCC controller all the way around and back. Uh, I'm going to be using some uh, 14 AWG wire for this. This is a stranded wire. I like the stranded wire for this because it's a little bit more flexible. And... I think what I did originally on this is um, black was the outside wire and red was the inside wire. It really doesn't matter. It's just, you know, keeping it straight for your own, <laughs> for your own sanity so you don't cause a short circuit. So I'm going to double check that and then we'll start uh, running this wire underneath the layout deck.
Yes, I double checked and the black wire is definitely the outside wire. Now this is 14 gauge wire and you want to use a fairly heavy wire because like this, it's kind of like household wire because it's not only carrying the electrical current for all of the track on the layout, it's also carrying that digital signal that's going to your locomotive. So and I'm just going to thread this up over the cross pieces of the box frame. There we go. Make sure I've got plenty of slack. Cut that off right about there. So I'm just kind of threading this around through the supports you know, to hold it in place. Now you don't want to get too rambunctious and you know pull this super tight. You want to have a lot of slack in the wire. At least I do. Because that makes it a heck of a lot easier to uh, you know pull these wires out to connect the feeders that we're going to be dropping down from the track in the next step. There are two or three spots where I do want to anchor this. And first thing is to wrap these with some black gaff tape. Or you could use those um, zip ties or those Velcro wire cable holders. That would work also. Now I've got some half inch staples in my staple gun and making sure that I'm straddling the wire. A couple of staples just to hold that in place. Now I'm going around and marking everywhere that I need to drop feeder wires down from the track to the wiring bus. And I basically put um, wires on every single piece of flex track. Uh, that way I'm not depending on the rail joiners to carry uh, electricity from one piece of track to the other. Uh, it, just makes for much, much more reliable operations. So every one of these sets of arrows is a place where I need to drill a hole down through the roadbed and uh, solder some feeder wires onto the track and then connect those down to the DCC bus. Now I like to come right up against the edge of the, of the rail. So when I bring the wire up through there, it doesn't have far to go. And for the track feeders, I like to use this uh, 28 gauge solid core wire. I did say black was the outside, right? Snip that off, put the red one through. I like to strip about a half an inch of insulation off the end of the wire like that. Bring this down and kind of bend it out like this. So it creates sort of a half loop. Place that bare wire right up against the rail and kind of pull this down and it uses the spring act, springy action of the of the wire to hold it up against the rail like that until you can solder it in place. A little dab of no clean flux on there. Get the other side too while I'm at it. Heating the rail and the wire. We should just be able to Hit that with the solder. And as soon as that solder hardens, you can pull this right down that through there. And I'll trim off this extra bit of wire right here. Once the uh, track is painted, the roadbed is detailed, 
you won't be able to see that at all if you don't know where it is. I've got so many of these that I'm going around and leaving a little check mark for every one that's done. So I, uh, <laughs> so I won't miss any. I see one there that's not done yet. Just to be sure you're all following what I'm doing here, in addition to uh, putting the feeders on the longer section of track, I also have to put them wherever there are uh, these insulated rail joiners on the on the uh, sections in between those. Otherwise, well, they would be dead. I think this is the last set of feeders that I need to worry about soldering on today. You know, if you're interested in a more more of a deep dive into wiring and electronics for model railroads. Um, Dale Angle over at Toyman Television has been doing an excellent ongoing series on what he calls electrics. <laughs> That's uh, absolutely everything you ever wanted to know about wiring a model railroad, both DC or DCC, you know, locomotives, track, everything, reverse loops, all of that stuff. He's been he's been doing a great job in presenting it. That's over on Toy Man Television. Uh, he's got a whole series going, and if you haven't checked it out already, I highly recommend it. Well, now I can start connecting the feeder wires to the DCC bus. And there's a really easy and efficient way to do this using what are called uh, suitcase connectors. The suitcase connectors, are, are they look like little suitcases. They're little plastic connectors that you, you put one wire in and you put it over the bigger wire and click it together and you're done. It takes, it takes a minute. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any of those. <laughs> and my local hardware store didn't have any of those either. So I'm going to have to do it the old fashioned way and I'll show you how I do it. Uh, first, strip off about a quarter inch of insulation off of the DCC bus. Then about an inch or so of insulation off of the feeder wire. Wrap that around and around like so. Put a dab of flux on there. And that will help the solder flow back into that braided wire. Apply some heat. A little solder on there. And wait a minute. And it's going to soak back in to that braided wire. And you'll see it turn silver. That's when you know... You've got a good connection. I'm going to use some good old fashioned electrical tape. Cut about an inch and a half piece. And wrap, you know, bend that feeder wire over to one side or the other. And then you can wrap it up. Now we'll do the red wire. Hopefully, you can now see the benefit of color coding the wire. You don't have to think about it now. Just connect the red wire to the red wire and the black wire to the black wire. And everything should work great. Oftentimes when I have a whole bunch of wires from these little short sections, which are close together like this, I'm just going to gang those together and solder them all on at once. All the blacks to the black bus and all the reds to the red bus. So just same as before, strip the insulation about an inch off of all of the blacks. Twist them together. And same thing with the reds. And now I only have to make two solder connections instead of six. <laughs> Now the only thing that's really left to do is to hook up the uh, TAM Valley Depot frog juicers to all the turnouts. And this is what the frog juicers look like. And hooking them up is really super easy. Um, that green wire that we soldered onto the frog goes to this center terminal right there. And then the outer terminals, each one of those hooks up to the DCC wiring bus on either the black or red wire. Really doesn't make much difference uh, which one. So first thing I need to do is solder on a couple of lead wires from again from the DCC bus to hook up to these terminals. Now 
Now I'll wrap those up with some electrical tape, just like before. Now I've got some 3M foam tape on the back of the frog juicer. And we'll use that to mount it to the bench work right about there. Now I'll take the green center wire, which is coming from the turnout frog, and I've stripped about half an inch of insulation off. And I like to bend it over like that. Just gives a little bit more for these uh, these screw terminals to grab onto. And that goes in the center terminal. And do the same thing with the black wire on this side. Okay, tuck these wires back inside the bench work. Now I just need to do the same for the other turnouts, but first I want to test this one. I'm going to flip on the uh, power for the DCC cab, and I should get either a red or green LED. There it is, that's green. Good. And then when I uh, throw the switch, that should turn red. And that means it's working. Well, I've got all of the frog juicers hooked up. So now I just want to clean up a little bit, clean the track with some odorless mineral spirits to get to any flux or grime or anything like that off of the rails. And we'll see if the trains run. Okay. Switch everything on. Give that a second to initialize. There we go. And I've got Goldfield and Calico number 19 on the tracks. We'll see how she runs. And that's going to do it for this edition of the Goldfield and Calico Railroad. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if it's your first time here, I hope you will subscribe and hit that notification bell so YouTube will let you know when the next video comes down the pike from Thunder Mesa Studio. Could be on the Goldfield and Calico or the Bandit Canyon Railway or the Thunder Mesa Mining Company or any of the other projects I've got going on around here. As always, a huge shout out and thank you to our Patreon members who helped to make these videos possible. Until next time, keep moving forward, my friends. Adios for now.